The Dubs swept a back-to-back -back against the Pelicans minus Stephen Curry, Andrew Wiggins, and DeAnthony Melton. On the first night of it, in their classic edition unis, Golden State was down 20 in the second quarter and looked dead in the water. Then, the having recently checked in Lindy Waters started pouring in buckets. Buddy Heald, Brandon Pajemski, Jonathan Kaminga, and Moses Moody followed suit as those three in addition to Waters combined for 102 of the Warriors' 124 points. The number one option in replace of Curry and Heald had 19 in the fourth quarter alone. Despite the Warriors being completely undermanned, they made the Ingram-Williamson Pelicans fold. That momentum carried into the second game of the doubleheader against New Orleans at Chase, as this time, in addition to Heald going off, it was a defensive showcase from Draymond Green that allowed Golden State to obliterate. Green was also one of six double-figure scores, but most beastily he had six stocks which included swatting five shots, and Dre held Zion Williamson to the lowest field goal percentage of his career. Keep it here. Right quick, almost 79% of you watching right now are not subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at dflowhoops on Instagram and X for a follow back. Thank you for your support, you're tremendously appreciated. After five games, the Warriors are second in the Western Conference with a 4-1 record. They're first in net rating along with deflections and assists per game, second in defensive rating, third in steals per game, third in offensive rating, and sixth in blocks per game. When they get back at full strength, what was once a 12-man deep unit, which Steve Kerr admitted he couldn't justify not using, is now a 13-man deep unit with Lindy Waters the third showing he can produce in the regular season. After Lindy dropped 21 and was a game high by far plus 26 in 31 minutes of action, Kerr said regarding Waters, from day one of camp, this guy has been one of our best players, frankly. In 104 games over three seasons for the OKC Thunder, Lindy averaged 5.3 points in just over 12 minutes per night and made an impressive near 38% of his shots from beyond the arc. Last year for the Thunder, he made career highs from all of the field, from deep, and the foul line. He fought his way onto the Warriors roster in the preseason by hitting a buzzer-beating game winner in Hawaii and having several solid performances. In the first game of two straight against New Orleans, how Waters picked up the slack for Curry, Wiggins, and Melton on both ends, particularly with lethal inside-out scoring, earned him a spot in this already stacked rotation. Waters said post-game, I got a strap on me. I just wake up and I can shoot it, no matter if I'm playing or not. It's safe to say Buddy Heald also has a strap on him, as the NBA's leader in three-pointers made so far is averaging 21.3 points on 55.6% shooting from beyond the arc. Prior to taking down the Pelicans for a second straight evening, Heald joins Steph, Ant, Kemba, and McCollum as the only players in NBA history to record 20-plus threes in the first four games of a season. He stepped into the starting five for the last two, but Heald isn't just the current favorite to win sixth man of the year. His value goes much deeper than that. The Warriors scoring leader is 10th on the MVP tracker, 8th in win shares, 4th in win shares per 48, and the man's only playing 23 minutes a night off the bench. With around an $8 million cap hit until 2027, this 31-year-old Bahamian pure sharpshooter in Chavana, Rainer, don't call him Rain Man, Buddy Heald, is going to be one of the biggest bargains in the league over the next few years. In what was the NBA's first ever six-team trade that included Buddy's predecessor, Clay Thompson, GM Mike Dunleavy landed the Bay Area a bona fide steal of a player. Silly drama was stirred up from the mainstream media regarding Jonathan Kaminga's move to the bench, specifically from Shams, but Kerr always likes to mix and match, and JK had no problem with doing whatever was best for the team, so really there was nothing there. Over two outings of coming off the pine, Kaminga covered Buddy's usual role as sixth man exceptionally, posting 33 points on 12 for 25 from the field. He had a vicious reverse windmill that looked even cleaner in those city jerseys, I wish the Warriors would have rocked on consecutive nights by the way, and in the second second half of the doubleheader, JK pulled off this nasty stop and start, I guess you could call it a Euro step to get past Brandon Ingram, which gave Steve Kerr a hilarious stank face. Stepping up as the number one point guard minus Stephen Curry, Brandon Pajemski is now leading the league in plus minus. You can't say enough about the hustle, defense, and improved offensive mechanics from the masked man, as even with the mask on, freaking mask on, his play hasn't taken a step back. If anything, it's taken a step forward. Credit to Brandon for playing through his injury and having clearly developed as a player over the summer. Someone who hasn't regressed as a player by any means and has maintained his prowess on the defensive side of the ball is Draymond Green. Draymond's attention to detail, positioning, physicality, and peskiness completely neutralized the Pelicans' highest volume player in Zion. 
Dre was scoping out what Williamson wanted to do, he constantly had a hand up in his grill, and this in turn forced Zion to rush his pace and look uncomfortable operating. There's only one team ahead of the Warriors in the standings right now, with Green's professionalism and defense being a big part of that of course, but Draymond took a shot at the one team ahead of Golden State postgame, saying, The one thing I see about the OKC team that's alarming to me is their postgame. Seven guys in the interview. There's a certain seriousness it takes to win in this league, and there's a certain fear you have to instill in teams in order to win. I just don't know if they're instilling that fear in teams with all the bromance and stuff after the game. Spot on take right there. The leader in Dre also said post game, I spent all summer listening to people talk about Chet and Wemby and what they're doing defensively. Don't forget about Dre. Golden State added two crucial assistant coaches this past summer in Terry Stotts and Jerry Stackhouse. Stotts has significantly improved the offense, but here's what Green had to say about how Stackhouse has improved the defense. He's uh, adding a fire and, and a, um, a, a level of accountability to us on the defensive end. Um, you know, he came in and you know, he came in kind of implementing some different uh, so some different defensive rules. You know anything about the NBA, we all run the same stuff. And, you know, he's coming back from college, obviously stacks a vet, you know, legend, 17, 18,000 points in this league. But, you know, he spent years in college and he came in with a couple of different rules where everybody's like, ah, oh. but he was so confident and he was so vocal about it. And every time you got it wrong, he's teaching you, that's not it. I know you've done it that way, that's not it. And when someone comes in with that type of force, with that type of confidence and presence, as a player, you have no choice but to believe it. And he's given guys a level of confidence on the defensive end that we hadn't had, but like I said, more importantly, a level of accountability that we haven't had over the last couple of years. And, you know, he's, like, that's all he talk about. He don't say a word about the offensive end. <laughs> Only defense. And he's on guys every single play. He has these defensive grades that he sent out every game. And you see guys going up to him like, it's competitive now, right? Like you get dinged for everything, man. He's like one small thing and your, your, your points, are, your grade is dropping. And it's like a list of everything you do. Well, you don't want to see that list. <laughs> and you got a lot of dings on it. And so there's just, a level of accountability that he's brought to that side of the ball for us. And he's created this challenge to where everybody's trying to be at the top of this list. In turn, it's creating the defense for us. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.